Hello and welcome to News Click. We are in conversation today with Dr. R. Ramachandran, Associate Editor of The Frontline. So there has been this uh, sudden controversy which seems to have come up out of nowhere about the success or otherwise of the thermonuclear explosion conducted during the Pokhran 2 series of nuclear weapons tests that India uh, conducted. Uh, to my mind, uh, or would I be right in saying that the test was not as much of a dud as uh, those who say it was and that it was not as much of a success as uh, it was originally claimed? Well, the, the success or failure of it um, is not for us to judge because it is purely a scientific thing. And um, to the credit of uh, the Department of Atomic Energy, we must say that uh, they have been quite open about the measurements they have done with the tests and publish whatever results they have obtained out of them. Uh, and since the days of uh, the Pokhran 2 tests, there have been controversies with regard to uh, the actual accomplish accomplishments of these tests in terms of the weapon yields and so on. And, but um, they have remained at an academic level. If there have been academic level discussions and exchanges and uh, um, positions taken and rebuttals given in scientific journals and that has been going on. Though over the last probably uh, 5 to 10 years it had subsided a little bit but uh, one cannot say that this was completely resolved. There was a difference of opinion among the uh, experts in the field and specialists in the field and uh, it remained at a purely academic level. But the current controversy is quite unseemly because it has come at a time when you are you are beginning to doubt the motive behind this because um, uh, the time is such that there is a possibility of increased pressure on India to sign the CTBT namely the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty. Uh, as the US administration currently has taken a position which reverses the earlier right. uh, Bush position on the uh, treaty. Um, so, uh, having already sort of um, yielded to this pressure under the Indo-US nuclear deal, uh, the, the constituency which would like India to conduct more tests uh, likes to probably um, explore this current uh, moment to push for more tests and uh, a failed uh, poker and tests in 1998 comes in handy to push such a logic at this point of time. Right. But if one reads the uh, comments given by different uh, people involved uh, in this, Dr. Santanam who started this uh, controversy going and described the test uh, as a dud and even if he was arguing that therefore there should be more tests. There are others like Dr. Iyengar, uh, for example, who may not argue that it was a dud, but who nevertheless think that there is a, an argument to be given for more uh, tests. Yes, uh, Iyengar's position has been consistent since the days of Pokhran II because he maintained that while he had no dispute with the actual yields of the weapons, but he believed that weapons need to be refined for it to be part of a arsenal building exercise of the government if they wanted it to be a credible minimum deterrent that uh, the government has proposed. Uh, in which case you need to refine, fine tune the exp um, uh, weapons for them to be mated with the appropriate uh, delivery vehicles and so on. So he had believed that the efficiency of the tests then carried out were not sufficient enough to be able to call, be called proper deliverable weapons. So, in that context, we had said we need more tests, not because it was a dud or any such thing. Yeah. Right. So, as far as the atomic energy establishment is concerned and presumably therefore the political leadership uh, also, uh, whatever is known about the yields of the different tests uh, during Pokhran 2, uh, is there any evidence that they have been any rethinking? or uh, that they are shaken by these uh, so-called revelations to rethink on the yields that have taken place or on the weaponization programs uh, that they have done? Well, as far as the political process which will uh, determine what India's position would be as well as the um, 
weaponization process which is entirely left to the services and the uh, central command which is in charge of these. Uh, from the purely sci DAE scientist point of view, the issue of um, the yields and the design of the weapon that they had uh, done in, at that time um, warrants no such uh, new exercise. They believe that uh, the uh, yields and the uh, achievements of uh, Pokhran 2 uh, had met their uh, design values as well as the simulation exercises that they had carried out and they are very confident of uh, building even higher yield weapons with similar designs without the necessity of carrying out more tests. More tests. You know, to a, to a lay person, uh, one question may crop up in the mind, which is that the threat of possession of a nuclear weapon uh, is uh, to some extent as much of a deterrent as the weapon itself. Uh, in the sense, uh, if the yield is 22 kilotons rather than 44 kilotons, I don't think it will deter anybody less. Exactly, uh, exactly. So, from that perspective, even if assuming that the yields were not as claimed by the DAE scientists, if they were 50 percent uh, um, yield or 60 percent, whatever it was, it is still a weapon in the sense of being able to deter some uh, adversary. So, to that extent, it is all right, but uh, uh, from an operational point of view, a weaponization process probably requires uh, a, a kind of a more assured delivery system uh, which will actually inflict the desired um, uh, damage to the opponent. Uh, probably the uh, services people would require um, some kind of uh, assured uh, yields of these um, weapons and not uh, malfunction when they are actually need to be delivered right. or something like that. Dr. Santanam who uh, as I was saying started this uh, uh, controversy going, uh, there may be questions about what motivated uh, this charge of uh, the test being a dud and so on or whether he is motivated by a, a desire to push uh, India to undertake more uh, tests. But uh, the spectacle that India has been seeing the last few days of leading scientists and engineers uh, of the technocracy of this country uh, engaging in rather unedifying uh, comments and remarks and attacks uh, on each other has been, I believe, not a very pleasant experience. Yes. If, if you ask the question why this happened right now, uh, the remarks were made originally in the context of a meeting which discussed uh, the CTBT and what should India's position currently should be. Um, in that context, obviously, if people who are um, not um, ready to sign the CTBT and who would like India to undertake more tests uh, were trying to see what kind of arguments could be put forward to see that India does conduct more tests and this was a handy one at that time. And um, um, given that the person who made the charge firstly did not present this in scientific terms, it was mainly a charge that he was making. And that too, if you, if you look at his remarks carefully, he is relying more on what the western observers have said. Right. Not because he had any instruments or he had any measurements or data to show for himself or that he had collected at the time of uh, uh, the test themselves. Uh, it would then have some kind of academic value and kind of a scientific interest for others to respond to. But in this kind of game, when you make an off the cuff remark like that, you are bound to attract charges and counter charges which will sort of… Uh, <laughs> have its own yes, momentum, momentum and uh, yeah, right. uh, reasoning. Yeah. Uh, in the light of what has been discussed till now and the responses that we have seen from the principal scientific advisor uh, to the government, Dr. Chidambaram and from the national security advisor, uh, M.K. Narayanan, how do you see uh, the official Indian response unfolding? Uh, over the next weeks uh, and months? Well, um, if I take uh, the National Security Advisor's uh, response uh, seriously, it would appear that the government is steadfast in not uh, carrying on with any more tests for the present and would like to continue maintaining its uh, unilateral moratorium. And given that there is also this um, 
the sword of uh, Indo-US nuclear deal hanging, uh, which they would like to continue with. Um, they would not like to break it by breaking the moratorium and uh, abandoning the deal altogether. So from that perspective too, I don't think the government and the political system would be uh, in, in keen to sort of ca ca carry out more tests, uh, whatever the scientific establishment may say or may not say. Yeah. But uh, do you think the scientific establishment uh, currently would go along with this position or would they harbor reservations? To me, uh, my <laughs> discussion with uh, people like Chidambaram and uh, um, Sikha, though they are not in uh, the Department of Atomic Energy right now, uh, would seem that uh, the, the scientific establishment too believes that there is no need for tests immediately. So uh, from that perspective too, I think I don't think there is any um, prospect of uh, immediate tests being undertaken by the Indians. Thank you.